Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. We're joined by two very special guests today for the first segment of the show, Kim and Peter McDonald with Lair Realty Partners in Lemmerster, Mass. Welcome to the show, Kim and Pete. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we asked you on to the show today to kind of talk about what's going on in uh, north central Massachusetts in, as far as the real estate market goes. Why don't you give us uh, an update on, on how the market is out there as far as inventory and prices? Uh, market's very active out there. Inventory's... I think it's a bit low. Mm-hmm. Things come, things go. It's uh, a lot of buyers in the marketplace based on, obviously, the, the price of money is so good. Yeah. And uh, I think supply and demand is, uh, the supply is more than the demand. Right. Yeah. So um, property is moving quick quicker because right. of that. Okay. Uh, people mm-hmm. are, are offering more towards a full price sometimes mm-hmm. even offer offers coming in uh, over full price with competing offers multiple offers is even even out in north central these days huh? yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah many i've just had a, a multiple offer situation there was four offers on the same property mm-hmm. and ended up uh coming uh to a, a, a accepted offer of over five thousand dollars over the asking price wow and why do you think that is is it that price was it the price point of that particular property, or was it something else? Um, I'm finding not just the price point, but just because supply is so low, mm-hmm. and um, you've got ten buyers waiting for one home to come on the market, and right. if they like it, they know they have to put their best foot forward. Right. So it's um it's a it's a competing situation, which is great for the seller. Yeah, absolutely. And are you finding sellers are being more reasonable with what they want, or because there's a a, a lower inventory, are they getting more aggressive with what they want for price? Well, I think sellers always want, whatever you say, they always want more. So Mm -hmm. they're always assuming you're trying to price it a little under to sell it quickly. But in most cases, I think sellers have come to the reality of where prices should be. And understandably, houses are much more affordable out in central Massachusetts. So true. Therefore, people are, you know, their minds are a little skewed as far as what they right. want to put in their pocket. Now, if, if you're a first-time buyer looking in, say, Lemonster or maybe one of the surrounding towns, what are you typically getting for the money for, say, the average house in, in Lemonster, a, a ranch or a small cape or that type of thing? Uh, the average numbers in Lemonster fall, like, in the 230s. Really? So if you get, if you have any property under that, certainly it's very, very active. Wow. Uh, up up upwards to 300,000 same activity really you get over 3 it slows down quite a bit and what about we're hearing all sorts of talk about uh high speed rail coming out of uh I think West Fitchburg going through Lemonster being in Boston in what 50 minutes yeah. it, you think that will affect the market out there you think you'll see more people kind of migrating out there as opposed to paying ridiculous prices you know inside 128 I think that the the existing rail has made a big difference for housing out there because we do have a brand new station right in Lemonster with it. Mm. It's a very the, active station yeah, too. Mm. Big, big parking, plenty of parking right on site. So I, I think that's a big selling point when people do come out to Lemonster. They know the access is like that. Right. And when is the high speed supposed to start? Do you, do you know? That's that's an unknown. They, they talk about it, but we'll see when it comes online. Right. And the new sta- there's a new station opening up in what West Fitchburg as well. Or is that just under construction that's, too? That's been in the planning stage. Is mm. you know it's off again, on again. Yeah, I'm not certain where that is right now. That's again, that's west of us. So I'm right. I look from Lemons to east post mostly. Right. From how about the Fitchburg market? Is there you still get a lot of lot of value for the dollar out there? Certainly you do. It's it's a much more depressed market than Lemons. So I look at it as two entirely different marketplaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fitchburg older old mill housing. Yeah. Um, a little, a little more uh, difficult to, for accessibility to Route 2, so that I think is the driving force for the Lemonster market, right. where you can get on Route 2, 190, and, and be in, in different areas if you're traveling. That's true, yeah. Yeah. I've always Absolutely. liked Lemonster, but not just because I lived there for 10 years. I thought it was a great <laughs> great area. I mean, you could you could be out to 495 in less than 10 minutes, depending mm-hmm. on what, what side of the town you're on. So it definitely has a lot going for it. Uh, what about move up buyers that that are looking to stay in Lemonster? I mean, what are you typically seeing for you know colonial price wise? Typically, anywhere from the high two hundreds mm-hmm. to the high three hundreds. Right. Um, when you get up into over a high three four hundred price range in Lemonster, you're getting um, a smaller percentage of the market. Right. There is so, act. There is activity there, however. Right. You up into. I mean, homes have sold in town six, seven hundred thousand, but it's yeah. just a very, very small audience in a, a, a small housing stock. Right, right. And of course, you got the surrounding towns too. I mean, Sterling, Lunenburg, those are nice places. Lancaster. Mm-hmm. I imagine it's a little more expensive to get into those 
Yeah, those, those are towns. those are the more bedroom, what I call the bedroom towns, mm-hmm. um, where Lemonster is more of the nucleus. Yeah, Lemonster is more of a city, so people are buying that city right. feeling. If they want rural, then they will go to Sterling or Lancaster or Lunenburg. Right. Certainly, there's a, there's a a distinct different feel to it, but again, the access to Lemonster and all its resources are there for those those towns as well. Right, because we have shopping, we have all the all the city conveniences. Yeah. Target. I used to love having Target right down the street. <laughs> you is, get yeah. anything you need, including most groceries. Yes. Yeah, you can't beat that. Why don't we talk a little bit about, uh, you know, if you're looking to buy or sell, how do you make the choice? How do you find an awesome realtor to represent yourself? Well, first thing is to uh, ask a lot of questions when mm-hmm. you're interviewing a realtor. Um, all realtors are not created equal, and I mean mm-hmm. that with all due respect to my peers. <laughs> it's true. It's but, very true. Yeah. Um, we, Peter and I have uh, a unique situation where we work as a team. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been in the real estate business for 32 years. We've been partners married for 32 years. And so we work together, mm-hmm. which is um, not, uh, it, it's just a definite benefit for, oh, yeah. for a lot of our clients. Yeah. So your clients get the team. Yes. And we, when we meet with a, a potential client, we try to um, assess which one of us would be the better lead person, mm-hmm. and then the other person is just the support person. Um, we have a most of our business, eighty-five percent of our business, is repeat and referral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we try to stress with the the client that one of us is the lead, and we're not trying to sell that team concept that you hear so much about. Right. Too often, the team concept you get lost in who's taking care of this and who's taking care of that. So there's only really one point person. So there's no excuses. There's mm-hmm. no, this person was supposed to do that. We are, the, we are the key person and it works out very well. And I, I think the people like that much better. Excellent. And why don't we talk a little bit about education and realtor designations as far as listing and buying agents? Okay. Yeah, that's very important. Um, there's lots of designations in the real estate um, community that a lot of people don't know what they are or what they mean. Mm-hmm. There's these three little letters and people don't people have no idea. It's basically it's like getting a um, associates, a, a bachelor's, a master's and a doctorate in a in in, in a college. All wrapped into one. Correct. <laughs> um, one of the designations that I particularly have is an accredited buyer representation, um, which was very involved. You have to have had many transactions over several years mm-hmm. and take a pretty lengthy course to get that designation. But that allows me to be able to assist my buyers as a buyer representative um, when anyone in the real estate community can call themselves a buyer's agent without having that particular designation. So, so there's, it's important. There's a difference. There's definitely a difference. There's definitely a difference. And I see one of the other designations you have is uh, the loss mitigation certification. Do you, do you see a lot of foreclosures and um, uh, short sales still happening in that area? There are quite a f- few short sales still going on. I have uh, one I've just completed that mm-hmm. took quite a while and one that's in the process right now. And it's a lot of... A lot of patience on the buyer's part, a lot of commitment to hang in there. Mm-hmm. And, of course, obviously on the seller's side, they have to be cooperative as well. Right. But it's, you know, with the right knowledge and the right, you know, right experience from past short sales, it, it, it can work out very well. And going back to values in, in Lemonster and some of the surrounding towns, you know, after the, uh, all the fallout from the, the meltdown, uh, after 07, 08, uh, when prices seemed like they were in free fall for a while. What's happened to prices, say, the last three or four years in, in Lemonster in particular? I'd say they pretty much returned to where they were. Really? Uh, in some cases, they're still, they're still below. We have properties that we sold in 07, 06, 07 that are selling right now for less than they sold back then. Mm-hmm. But obviously, that was really things were really peaking out then. When you get into the 8s and the 9s, there were some good values, uh, but right now they just—it's pretty stable. I don't mm-hmm. really see any growth mm-hmm. in the last year it's or two. Creep, it's a creep grow. It's yeah, a, it's creep. It's slow, slow yeah, growth. There's, there's no two-year return on buying something and making a, a, a good return. Right. Two years later, which so for years it was that way, as you know. Oh yeah. So now it's more of a buy and hold. Yeah. Type just, of thing. Yeah. I tell people it's stable. It's just things continue on a flat plane. Well, stable's stable's good, especially after what all of us went through, you know, a few years back. If you're not losing anything, stable's okay. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, stay in the same beats the heck out of losing any day. Um, Going back to uh, you, 
a lot of your your business is referred from past clients and we were talking before we got started today that you're working a lot with uh past clients either parents who are selling houses or now their their children who are buying houses tell us about what you, how you work with your your clients to get those generational referrals well, over the past 32 years, we have a, a sphere of, of clients that we um, keep in touch with. Service is very important to us, mm -hmm. um, and our clients appreciate that service. So the, the clients that we've sold property to over the years are now in a situation where their parents are aging. They need to go into assisted living, so they're having their parents um, contact us to sell their homes. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, over the past year especially, I've had several clients that are the children of those past clients that right. are that were 10, 11, 12 years old when we sold them their houses, uh, their mm -hmm. parents' houses, and now they're buying houses at 24, 25 years old. Right. So that is a huge compliment. Absolutely. Well, it's because you guys do it right. Uh, one of the things you always hear in both of our markets is, you know, everything's going online and everybody's, well, to a large degree, they do start their search online, but one of the things that I think you guys have, have seen, we talked about it before the show today, is that, you know, when it comes time to actually buy something to make that huge purchase, even the younger group, they're, they're not really going online to find somebody to work with. It's, they really want that face-to-face -face type of thing. Yeah, I think that's accurate. They'll do a lot of fact-finding and mm -hmm. in information gathering. But I think when it comes down to buying the property or selling a property, they want somebody to facilitate it for them, somebody that can walk them through the process and keep it seamless and you know, make right. it a great experience. Right. And they and they also wanted to instead of doing the research, they if their good friend says, "Hey, we just bought a house from Peter and Kim McDonald. They're great. Call them. They'll treat you right." Mm -hmm. They call us and we treat them right. So it's um it it's it's, it, it benefits them um, because they don't have to do that research. Right. Yeah. Obviously, no, obviously, a lot of people have never had a a bad experience so they don't know what a good experience is but quite often we'll finish a transaction and the people will they'll be applauding Kim and myself just the way that the pr process took place just as we at, we wanted it to be right and uh, it's a it's a great ending and how about knowledge of you know current financing appraisal and closing requirements how does that help your buyers through the process and sellers well uh, unlike years ago when we started we we don't need to pre-qualify people and do mm -hmm. all those things we used to do part of what we try to do now is guide them to the right lender mm -hmm. and not steer them from other lenders but you know there are there is a handful of very good lenders that we like we prefer to use that we know that they treat their business like we treat ours and that's important right and, and majority of the time the buyer will take our advice on that yeah uh, less and less people are doing the online thing more of them same as with us they want to see the person they're dealing with they want to you know, they want a relationship with the lender. Absolutely. Mm, it's a whole team effort between the lender and the closing attorney and the appraiser and mm -hmm. the, you know, the two real estate agents that are generally working, one for the buyer client, one for the seller client. If everyone works together and everyone does their job, then the whole process is smooth. Mm -hmm. um, and I look at my, my position, whether I'm representing a buyer or a seller, is I'm actually the director. So I want to make sure that Everyone is doing their job, mm -hmm. um, including myself, and I don't go home at the end of the day until I know everything is, is done and, or is in process, and communication is very important, too. Right. Making sure that your client is, you know, just knows that you're there working for them and everything, updating them and... and not yeah, communication is the big part of key. it. Yeah. Yeah. They need to know what the process is from the get-go. Right. So they know what all the pieces are, so there's no surprises, or, or you limit the surprises. Right. There's always surprises. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the, yeah, the, yeah. limiting them is a good way to go yeah. at it, though. Yeah. So uh, as far as people that are buying, are you, who finding that uh, that they want to look at every house on the market, or do people kind of have an idea of what they want, and they're more focused on what they're going to look at? Some do and some don't. Um, the ones that don't. Um, part of my job is to identify exactly what, you know, what is it that you want in a home? Where do you want to be? How much do you want to spend? You have to get qualified, proved first. Mm -hmm. um, go out, look at a few homes. Um, in the past, I think people were always opposed to driving by. Mm -hmm. But if I have a buyer who gets out of the car and says, I don't want to go in and look at the house because I don't like the neighborhood, then I wish they had driven by before mm -hmm. we got to that process. And then there's some that know exactly what they want. Right. Look at two, three houses and say, this is it. This is what I want. Yeah. 
Well, I suppose it makes it a little easier these days now that you don't have a hundred homes to go look at. It's a lot less. It is easier, but yeah. also it's easy these days because all those photos and all that information is available to them prior to getting to the property. Oh, that's true. I mean, they can go on Google Earth to see it from above. They can look at tax records. So there's, you know, they know they, when they mm. get there, they they have a good idea of what they're looking at. Mm. Yeah, but it must make it a lot easier than yeah. did back in the day when you had to look through books or oh, actually certainly. physically go see it. Yeah, it's crazy. And yeah. it makes it better for the, for the seller, too, because they don't have to clean their house and leave and then have me call them and say that the buyer didn't want to look at the house because yeah. they don't like the location. So That's no fun. No. When people, the uh, the older customers that you have that are actually selling and, and moving on, are you finding they're staying local or is everybody still headed south for warmer weather? Hmm. Uh, That's one of the things we've seen yeah. changing in some some communities is that you know, people aren't as anxious to go to Florida and yeah. sell their house up here that, you know, they're just tending to downsize and stick around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of the the older generation with grandchildren and all that, they may test out the Florida waters, but they find that they really want to be here in the winter for their family. I mean, right. They, they see time on this earth shortening, so they want to spend as much time as they can. Yeah. In the past few months, I, I you know, I've had some that have moving from Central Mass down here to a, a senior place in Shrewsbury. Mm-hmm. And then I have others that are just relocating locally into just into an apartment. So yeah. a- or buying a condo. And condos used to be more first-time buyer. That how That's how you would get into the market in a condo. You can't... The condos are very difficult to find now because... They're they're in two markets now. They're in the right. first time home buyer market and the the what I call the downsizing market. Right. You know. Right. Well, great information. I want to thank you both for coming in and sharing today. If anybody listening is thinking about buying or selling, you can get more information about uh, Peter and Kim on their website, themcdonaldgroup.com. Again, that's themcdonaldgroup.com. We've got to take a break for some commercials, but stay tuned. We've got more get real with Bob and Stacy after this. <laughs> 